With an increasing awareness of the damage done by internal parasites, horse owners work hard to protect their horses from the dangers associated with well-known parasites such as small strongles, pinworms and ascarids. The equine tapeworm, however, has long fallen under the radar of most deworming programs. Able to evade detection by traditional faecal flotation tests, the tapeworm's presence has all too often been overlooked by owners, stable managers and veterinarians alike. New research, along with advances in testing, has shed light on the significance of these parasites. As you will see, tapeworms are all too common in horses throughout the country and can be a frequent cause of such serious conditions as spasmodic colic and ileocecal impaction colic. Three species of equine tapeworm affect the horse. Anaplacephala perfoliata is by far the most prevalent and therefore it is of the most concern to horse owners. Anaplacephala magna and Paranaplacephala mammalana, however, do occur in Australia. The tapeworm belongs to a class of parasites known as cestodes, unlike ascarids and strongles, which are nematodes. Tapeworms have a simple body structure composed of a scolex which attaches to the intestinal wall of the horse and many proglottids or body segments which each contain reproductive organs and eggs. The tapeworm receives nutrients into its body through its tegument, its absorptive outer layer. Anaplacephala perfoliata is by far the most abundant and infective of the equine tapeworms. It usually measures about 1 to 3 inches in length and has a rounded scolex with four hooks that allow it to attach to the horse's intestine. The very nature of tapeworm eggs makes diagnosis of their presence extremely difficult, as we will examine in more detail later on. Tapeworm eggs occur in very small numbers and many times they exist in packets rather than as individual eggs. The excreted tapeworm eggs don't float well in traditional faecal flotation tests, which mean they evade veterinary detection quite easily. Anaplacephala perfoliata tends to congregate on the surface of a very unique area in the horse, the ileocecal junction. This spot is the common opening between the ileum or small intestine, the colon and the cecum, the pouch that is the beginning of the large intestine and serves as a kind of fermentation vat. In order to get a better understanding of the tapeworm's life cycle and how it affects the horse, let's first take a look at the anatomy of a normal horse. First, we'll take away the skin and skeletal structures and look at the whole intestinal tract. When we remove some structures such as the spleen, the stomach, the small intestine and the rectum, what remains is the tail end of the small intestine, where it feeds in through the cecum and then out onto the large intestine. From this view, we see the peristaltic contractions or waves that move digesting food from the small intestine and into the horse's cecum to undergo further digestion. The cecum functions as a fermentation vat, so the horse is able to utilise some complex molecules from their vegetarian diet. This digesture is then moved out into the large intestine to be absorbed. As the ileocecal junction is exposed from the inside, we see how food comes from the small intestine and moves through this junction into the cecum and after some time fermenting, the contents are then expelled into the horse's colon. The unique structure here is the ileocecal junction, the common opening between the small intestine, colon and cecum. All tapeworms have what is known as an indirect life cycle. They need an intermediate host in order to complete their life cycle. Equine tapeworms use an extremely common, tiny pasture-dwelling insect for this purpose. The orbited mite. These mites are very small and they're found in virtually all soils all over the world. Let's take a closer look at how this mite helps the tapeworm complete its life cycle, keeping horses infected for long periods of time. Orbited mites are common inhabitants of forage and pastures where they eat tapeworm eggs. Once inside the mite, 
the eggs hatch and develop into larvae or sister cercoids. Horses ingest the mites along with the immature tapeworms inside and they are swallowed down the esophagus and into the stomach. As the digestion process continues, they travel back into the small intestine where the mite itself is finally digested, releasing these developing tapeworms. The tiny tapeworms continue their journey along with other digesting materials to the ileocecal junction where they congregate. They then attach themselves to the tissue lining the digestive tract with hook-like structures while they mature. These mature tapeworms each have a series of proglottids or body segments, each packed with eggs which detach and release into the manure. These egg packets seem to get broken down or dissolved before being excreted by the horse, so they are rarely visible to the naked eye. Mites living on the pasture ingest these eggs and the life cycle starts all